Hey everybody, I'm Beeps Kelly. Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you are having a happy day today. We are going to take a look at Meghan Markle's makeup habits. What sorts of eye makeup and face makeup she tends towards using and any mistakes that we can see or things that she does that do help bring out her best features or things that she maybe needs to do a little bit differently or better to flatter her face a little bit better. I am a trained makeup artist, however, I don't currently do that as my job. So full disclaimer, this is all just my personal opinion. My knowledge as a makeup artist, as well as just overall visual appearance that we can see and observe with our eyes. So first, let's take a quick look at her general facial features. She does have smaller eyes like the actual space in which her eyes take up on her face is quite small they are also recessed so they are a little bit sunken in to the socket itself which is also sort of taking over her eyelid a little bit so she doesn't necessarily have full-blown hooded eyes but they give that appearance because they are so deep set and also small so i feel like that's what's giving off the hooded eyelid vibe is the fact that they are recessed and small rather than actual hooded eyelids. She doesn't have full hooded eyelids where the skin of the upper eye and brow bone area hides most of the lid, but she has much less lid exposed than many women that have deep set eyes. As you can see here, deep set eyes do not equate to less lid exposure. Angelina Jolie has great amount of lid exposure here with her big, beautiful deep set eyes. The combination of a small size, partial hood, and deep set is creating a darker shadowed eye appearance on Megan overall. She also doesn't have a huge amount of space along her brow bone below her eyebrow. Essentially what that means is there's minimal lid space visible on Meghan Markle's eyes. Of course, that will change if she's lifting her eyebrows in an expression, but generally just looking at her eyes when she's looking straight ahead, the space for her eye lid is very narrow. Now she also has a little bit of a dip right here under where her eye is before her cheekbones come in. That sort of a dip is not always seen with recessed eyes, but it is sometimes. And so this is presenting an additional challenge underneath here, having that little bit of a dip. It can give the appearance of dark circles under the eyes even if you don't have them, and it can make it difficult to wear like a smoky, blown out lower lash line the way I have on today because it will tend to look just sort of smudged and it will have a greater possibility of smudging down and coming down too far and looking sort of messy and literally messed up, like it's been smudged too much or by accident. So when she does very heavy lashes, smoky eyes, or really dark, heavy eye makeup, it doesn't work so well because it closes her eyes in even more, makes them look even darker, even smaller, and even farther away, so to speak. As you can see here in this picture, the smudging just sort of sunk down over this lower lash line area a little bit too far to where it doesn't look intentional, and that is likely due to the anatomy of her eye more than anything. But in this picture here, she is lacking lower lash line eyeliner. She just has a bit of mascara on the lower lash line, and it looks much better. It's much more open on that lower lash line area. It allows that area to be brighter. It minimizes the look of that sort of dip that she gets here but her lid color is too dark still and as you can see here over on this side it's also not blended enough. In this particular makeup look also her bronzer is far too low on her cheek. It's coming all the way down into this area very dramatically. It almost looks like it's not blended well. She has good cheeks. When she smiles, her cheeks come up really nicely, the apples of her cheeks. So she would benefit from keeping things much more lifted looking rather than trying to contour a more sunken look right here. She, with her face shape, I think would look a lot better if she just kept the blush to the apples of the cheeks and kept the contour really, really high up on her cheek area. So here is an example of the darker, smokier eye just being a little bit overkill. She has dark, 
color on her lid. She has lots of dark smoky eye going on here that is dipping all the way down to where that dip is. It's coming down really far. She also has strong amounts of bronzer on and she has a brighter lip. It looks to be like a bronzy red colored lip. Those three things all at once is too much. That's where you get into the clown territory when you have all three areas being a focal point. If her lip was matte, it would have helped a little bit. If she had maybe a slightly less intense bronzer situation going on, that would have helped a little bit. But really you need to pick one or two things maximum that are gonna be focal points. Shine on your lips is gonna turn it into a focal point. So making your lips a little bit more matte will always help take down the intensity of it a little bit. So if you're doing a really strong eye look, and you have a lot of bronzer or blusher, then you don't wanna do a shiny, bright lip as well. So this makeup look, I actually quite like a lot of aspects of this, but again, her bronzer is just coming down far too low for her face and far too close. It needs to stop a little bit farther back, I feel like, for her particular face. It almost looks like there's a patch of bronzer back here, and then there's a patch of bronzer up here closer to her cheeks. It's strange. There's like a gap of bronzer. I'm not sure what's going on, but it's distracting from the look because her complexion looks lovely. She has a good highlighter for her skin tone on. Her nude pink lip is very pretty on her and she doesn't have an overly heavy amount of eye makeup on. I do wish she wouldn't have lined her lower lash line here because again, it's just too heavy for her eye shape. But overall, this eye look isn't that bad. Here again we have a matte lip. I feel like that does a really great job of allowing it, her face to not look like there's too much going on because she does have dark eye makeup on always, which you know that's fine. A lot of people really enjoy having eye makeup or like having their eyes be more of the focal point, but the matte lip I think is a great choice here. The excessive amounts of eyeliner though that she has going on paired up with the heavier false eyelashes is closing her eyes in. They look very, very small and very closed in. Luckily, it's not smudging down too far, but here you can clearly see the dip that she gets here and how it's at risk of having too much shadow by having that darker color. The, and by shadow, I mean the actual darkness um, that it's giving to her eyes rather than eyeshadow itself because she clearly has on some darker eyeshadow here. The key to helping out small eyes to not look so small and closed in is applying a lighter color to your lid. You can still put a darker color in your crease if you want and blend it up towards your brow bone a little bit if you wanted. Like she has room where she could have some darker color come up towards her brow bone some, up above where her lid and whatnot is, but she always goes for these dark colors on her lid and it just furthers the small recessed look of her eyes. As she has small eyes, she would benefit greatly from having a lighter color on the lid, which would allow them to look a little bit more forward. This is an example of a pretty good makeup look for her. Her eyebrows are not too dark here, which is great. The liner on her lower lash line is only in her waterline, so it's not coming out from there at all, which is a great technique as well. If you really do enjoy having eyeliner on your lower lash line, then putting it only in the waterline rather than out along where the actual lash line is can be a great alternative or sort of compromise and she did that here or the makeup artist did that here. It still looks like there's some darker color on her actual lid though or perhaps she has on false lashes that is just drowning out the whole situation and you can't see her lid at all. It's just the dark lashes blocking everything. So it's important to remember if you have similar eyes, deep set or smaller eyes or they are hooded or any combination of those three things, then wispy lashes are your friend. Something that has a very fine band or a band that is clear. Like as you can see, this particular pair of lashes is actually a clear band. So this eyelash would be a good choice in terms of having a clear band. I hope that that showed up okay. But the actual band itself across this part here that glues onto your lash line is clear. And using a glue that will show up clear as well is very important but 
the wispier and lighter the lashes are, the less heavy they will be and the less they will block the actual eyelid away from view. So you would want to go for a wispy lash that is also rather light and fine. You can certainly go for very long lashes, but you don't want them super thick because they will just, like I said, create too much of a shadow and make your eyes look even smaller, even darker, even further back. This is a fairly good eye look for her here. She looks rather bright. There's a lot less bronzer happening low on her cheeks, which is lovely. I really do prefer the lighter, paler lip tones on her. I don't really particularly like darker or red lip on her as much. You can see ever so slightly, just a bit, I will try to zoom it in, that her lid is a pale color. It seems to be like sort of a cool toned, taupe sort of color along the lid and that is exactly what she should go for. She is wearing false lashes here. You can see the band um, lifted up above where her actual lashes are so that could have been applied a little bit better or a little bit farther down along the very root of her lashes to make it look just a little bit more seamless but over overall this is a really great choice for her eye makeup because as you can see it's a lot lighter looking. Here in this eye makeup look, you can see it got a little bit smudgy down below. So that just comes from putting too much liner or too much shadow down below, and it just creates a darker smudge that tends to sink down when you have that sort of recessed look to the bottom of your eyeball area. Here with that darker eye makeup, it just makes her eyes look even darker, even more round, even more deep set. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. That is what her eyes look like. But when you compare it with a picture like this one here, with the lack of the bottom eyeliner altogether and the brighter color on her lid, her eyes look so much more forward. Yes, they are hooded. Yes, they have that dip. Yes, they are still somewhat deep set, but they are more forward than they are in the colors where she's wearing a lot of darker eye makeup. So this eye look is so much more flattering. She looks so much prettier here and so much more ready to connect, in my opinion, when she has this lighter look to her eye makeup. And that's one of the keys to etiquette in terms of dressing for the occasion and the event, what would be appropriate and not. And wearing super dark eye makeup that is not flattering to your face is not the best choice. When you are someone like this, where you're a public figure and you're going out to meet people, whether you're trying to network, fundraising, or you're participating in a charity, or you're just doing a meet and greet like this, you are some sort of ambassador which is essentially what she was at the time, was an ambassador. In that sort of role, you're wanting to connect with people, you're wanting to be non-controversial because you're wanting to unify and build connections with people in a very short amount of time. So you don't want, as we talked about last week, you don't want your hair covering up your eyes and your face because that's closing off literally not just your facial expressions but your ability to connect with people because your eyes are hidden. So you don't want to do that. You want to dress in a way that's non-offensive and respectful to the event and things like that. So covering yourself properly if you're going to be in a house of worship is a good example of that. Following dress codes like not wearing red where it's not appropriate to wear red, for example. Wearing colors that match the color scheme so that you don't stand out for the wrong reasons in a photograph. But also in terms of like not dressing too casually or too formal or dressing for the wrong season or weather. All of those things matter because they draw attention in the wrong way. But when it comes to makeup, it's all about creating a face that is pretty, yes, beautiful, yes, even a bit glamorous at times, but that is there to connect and that is welcoming and friendly, right? You want to look friendly if you're an ambassador or you're somebody out to meet people. So you're not doing your makeup for a glamour shoot or an Instagram post and you're not trying to look like a makeup model when you're going out and about. So you don't want heavy contour or things that don't look good in person because the primary objective of these events is to be seen in person. When you're going to be seen from afar or on stage, say you're giving a speech or you're going to be kind of far away from people all day like in a parade, like say Trooping the Color or at the coronation where for the most part you're going to be photographed or even on video camera from 
a distance, then you do your makeup differently. You do have stronger contour. You do not blend as much because otherwise it will just diffuse too much and not show up. You do a completely different style of makeup than you do for in-person events. These are all times where she was doing like a meet and greet of some sort for the most part with some exceptions. And so as you can see here, this is the type of makeup that would be ideal for something like a meet and greet. This looks more approachable. It brings your eyes forward, which should always be the showcase is your eyes and your smile. So you would want to minimize the amount of contour and blush you have going on so that your smile and your eyes can remain the focal point. So this man actually had a smudge left behind on his coat from Meghan Markle's makeup. So that was just an error on her part for actually somehow resting her face on his shoulder and leaving behind some makeup. But that's one of those situations where it was just a mistake that could happen to anybody. You know, when you're trying to meet and greet with somebody and you accidentally, you know, brush your face up against them, that happens to me quite a lot because I'm so short. So people try to give me a hug and they don't come down far enough. So then my face ends up like on their shoulder. It just happens all the time to me. I'm used to that or their chest spray is your friend. The Charlotte Tilbury setting spray is literally going to prevent that altogether. So that would just be adding a step to your makeup. If you're going to be like at a wedding or graduation where you're meeting and hanging out with people a lot, use a setting spray so that your makeup doesn't rub off on them and so that it stays on your face the whole day so you continue looking your best the whole day without your makeup starting to do weird things like move around where it shouldn't. This is what I would say is the ideal makeup for her. She has a light color on her lid and it is a shimmer so it will catch a little bit more of the eye. And she has not too dark of a color in here. Her liner, as you can see, is actually lifted. Her eyeliner is coming away from her lash line up here. It doesn't follow her lash line all the way down because she does have those rounder, smaller eyes. This allows her eyes to not only look more lifted, but much more open, especially from a short distance away. So this is a great example of using a technique with eyeliner to lift and open your smaller eyes a little bit better. And again, notice there is no dark eyeliner. There's, there's a tiny bit of that almost taupe sort of color swept along her lower lash line, but nothing dark, nothing heavy. And shimmers are a little bit more brightening as well. So I think that was a great choice. Again, her eyebrows aren't too dark here as well, which is another very good choice. Here we have way, way too much bronzer and blush and even highlight. So this was another daytime sort of event. As you can see, it's daylight back there behind her. And she has on so much heavy bronzer and blush just slathered on this whole section of her face, paired up with a ton of highlighter along this area here. And it's even brought down really low onto her cheeks probably all over her nose, probably up here as well. And it looks like she has on dark eyeliner on the lower lash line. Yes, she has dark liner on her lower lash line too. So this is just too heavy of makeup for this day. It's too much makeup and it's certainly too dark on the blush and bronzer. When you wear too much makeup or too much dark and heavy makeup in person, it just simply doesn't look that good. People can tell our brains are automatically wired to find things that look a little bit out of place and that will automatically trigger our brains to notice that it looks like this person's wearing face paint. It looks like this person is wearing way too dark of makeup or way too much of makeup. That is why it's so noticeable when somebody's wearing a foundation that doesn't match their skin tone, like if they're wearing foundation that's two shades too dark. It just looks horrible. It looks orange, it looks patchy, it looks awful, and it's no good. So we automatically notice those things, and her bronzer there and blusher was applied too heavily, but also probably maybe a shade too dark as well. So here's an example of bad makeup. Um, she wore this when she was going to be on stage. So part of that is Yes, she's going to be on stage here, so she might wear heavier makeup than normal, but she still should have worn a light color over her lid and minimized this lower lash line here, even though she was going to be on stage because it just swallows up her eyes and makes them look so small and so far away. Just like here with the Oprah interview, so much dark eyeliner. It looked so horrible. I couldn't stand it. I didn't understand why she wore her eyeliner like that. In the teen years, okay, there's a stereotype that you will wear super dark 
eyeliner all over the place and it's gonna be like really dark and really intense. You should stay away from that if you're wanting to look vulnerable as an adult. I'm just saying, Megan wore the stereotypical um, rude, rebelling teenager eye makeup look to go on Oprah and cry about being a victim. So it didn't match up. Your makeup does need to match the vibe you're trying to convey too. Here's another example of it coming just a little bit too far down here. It made it look like she had sort of dark circles under her eyes, but luckily her blush isn't too dark. It's still coming on too low. I bet it would give her a much more youthful look to her makeup if she would start wearing her blush just a little bit higher. It just would lift things a little bit, stick to the apples of the cheeks. In general, with your blush, you don't want to be putting it down super low. You want it up higher on the face. So when you have those smaller eyes or deep set eyes, a lot of the tricks and tips out there are about brightening them, lightening them, and just sort of generally wearing a little bit less heavy of eye makeup because you do need to brighten it up a little bit. You've got some shadows going on, you've got some closing in going on with your general bone structure, and that's just one of those things you gotta be realistic. You may certainly be able to wear whatever sort of makeup you want whenever you want, yes, but if you are, have a professional engagement or a situation where you're doing something in a more professional or high profile capacity, say you're getting photographs done, you do want to stick with these tips and tricks that are the most flattering for your individual eye shape or face shape um, and skin tone and things like that. You don't want to be making those types of mistakes when you're going to be photographed or you're in an important position like she was here. You want to go ahead and play around with fun makeup and wear your makeup however it makes you happy when you are just doing your own thing and having your personal life go on. In these more professional situations where etiquette matters, then with smaller eyes, deep set eyes, or recessed eyes, closing them in further with dark eye makeup is just the wrong approach. If you guys found that somewhat interesting and liked today's video, thank you so much for being here with me. Please leave in the comments what you think. I can't wait to read them, and I will see you in the next video. Have a happy day, everybody. Bye!